All right, we got a brand new Brindley ten inch sleeve hitch plow. Brand new in the box, NOS if you will. I mean, new old stock, but this is brand new. So this is an actual brand new Brindley sleeve hitch plow. You can just go to Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, you think you can get them on Amazon Prime. Um, they'll ship them right to your door. That's how I got this one. Uh, I got it shipped right to the door. Don't have to go anywhere. It's not freight. Um, I guess my thing is, is the biggest advantage to doing this versus buying a 50 year old one. Uh, you know, this is for somebody that doesn't want to deal with 50 year old stuff. So all the hardware is going to be new. You have brand new mold board, brand new uh, plow share. You know, the colder isn't completely wore out or, or uh, squeaky because it's all rusted tight or whatever. You know, this is something that's brand new, fresh out of the box. It's not worn out. And, and everyone's like, well, this is, you know, so expensive. And I, I'm not disagreeing with the fact that this is going to be more money up front for a sleeve hitch plow. If you want to go get a sleeve hitch plow, you can probably go get a used one. You know, they're all over the place. However, so you go buy a used one and then go buy a brand new mold board and then go buy brand new hardware and then paint it or get it freshly powder coated. All that stuff and then you add in any sort of labor to your time, you might as well just go buy one of these brand new out of the box and Brindley will ship it right to your door. You don't have to find one or travel or whatever. So. Also, the fact that I can go get this brand new in the box also proves the fact that if you have an old one, it's pretty cool that the company that's been around since 1830s is still around and still can, you know, go get parts for it and call them up and they can answer your technical questions and they have a whole customer service department to like help you out. Just that in itself to me is worth it because if they've been around for almost 200 years now, they're going to be around for the next 200 years, which I won't be here, but somebody will and probably have to get parts for this plow. And, you know, 200 years from now, they'll probably still have it. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm kind of excited about this. This is like the nicest thing I own. So like the idea of opening this up, I'm almost half tempted not to, you know, you know, it is pretty cool to say you have a brand new in the box sleeve hitch plow. Um, but Without further ado, we shall cut it open. I'm excited to see what this packaging is. Huh. So the bottom's all put together already, which is exciting. I'm interested to see the differences between this plow and, say, an older sleeve hitch plow. Um, you know, I, I've had a couple of the older ones, or a lot of the older ones, and I've already noticed the differences between those older ones, but something that's brand new. I mean, this is 2020 right now, um, sadly. And the fact that, you know, you can just go get one of these new. It's pretty interesting that it's relatively close to the same as what you could get in 1965. So um, that's intriguing to me. So get this unbox laid out and put it together and see what she looks like. All right. So we got this new plow all out, spread apart, out of the box. Uh, initial in impression, I guess, is pretty interesting. Um, I mean, it looks just like a Brindley plow, which should, I would hope so. Um, the owner's manual is kind of cool. I haven't read it because I don't know how to read. Um, the hardware all looks very nice. It's interesting. They still use the square nuts, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of a thing that's gone by the wayside, but they're still using them. Um, I think it's for the adjuster on the landslide. Uh, they need square nuts account of um, keeping the nut from turning whenever you adjust it, um, which is understandable. Um, 
the new colder. The only thing I don't like is they scratch the bottom, which it's all going to come off anyways whenever I put it in the dirt, but um, it's part of shipping. Um, everything looks really nice. Uh, I actually kind of really like the new Brindley stickers on the on the beam. Uh, it's a nice red um, sticker. Um, the new serial stickers are kind of interesting too. They're reminiscent of the old ones, but a little different. Um, but there was in the time the old uh, Brindley stickers were black and red, just like this, but um, a little bit different design. This new one is really cool looking. Um, it's not like the old oval ones in the white plows, but um, as far as modern progression of a company, I think it's doing very well while still has a um, you know a tie to the old days too. So, which is I think the point of it. So, cool marketing standpoint. So. Um, I guess really we just have to put this thing together. I'll get some tools and bolt it all together. I did three different sub-assemblies, pretty much the main parts of the plow. Uh, I didn't think it was that exciting to like video me putting all this together. Uh, fairly simple, uh, follow the instructions and you can't really miss it. Everything tells you exactly what to do, what not to do. Um, hopefully I don't have any extra parts left over because that would just be more efficient than the way the engineers designed it, but that's besides the point. Um, plow bottom, put the uh, landslide on it, put the beam on it, uh, main beam, assemble it together, um, put your adjuster on it. All that goes together with the uh, spacer up here, the spacer here to keep your lock nuts back here so you can adjust your uh, pitch of your plow bottom up or down and then lock, lock it into place so it can't adjust as you're going down the furrow. Um, colder, uh, just like the old ones, uh, I did notice another weird thing that not many people I don't think would care to know, but um, the mounting rod is actually a three quarter inch diameter, uh, which is a normal standard round stock. Uh, however, the older ones were an odd size. They were in between three quarters and seven eighths. So it's a little weird to get one machined uh, if you would ever need one. Um, so that's kind of cool just to know a little update as well as on the beam, the adjuster brackets here are bolted in with this bolt uh, on the older ones. I mean, we're talking in the 60s here, so 50 years ago at least. Um, they were welded here, uh, but Obviously manufacturing processes get refined over time um, to where they probably found it easier and cheaper to save some time and money uh, by putting a bolt here. Um, it's not gonna change the way it plows. So um, U-bolt for the uh, holder here. Um, I put the plow hitch in this position. Uh, it actually does show you in the manual um, which I think is quite, quite interesting just because I have the old original plow manuals and it tells you how to plow, you know, go in the middle and then turn around and come back and go from the center out. Um, but this one also tells you, which the old ones I believe do, but this one actually tells you which of the three holes to put your hitch pin, um, depending on where your uh, wheels are spaced, which is uh, quite interesting. Uh, that's something that in the old one, it doesn't really tell you. Um, it tells you how to adjust the plow on the old ones, but not quite uh, that in depth. Um, there is multiple adjusters. Uh, you can take this, flip it upside down. You can take it, um, take it from this hole and move it down to this hole, uh, depending on how you want to uh, set it up on your tractor. It depends on the hitch, depends on the size of the tires, uh, your track width, and that sort of thing. Um, obviously, it depends on tractor to tractor, so each one's kind of different. Um, for right now, I just set it up like this. Um, quite, you know, easy to follow instructions in the book that comes with it. Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So pretty much I just need to put the beam on the bottom and clamp the colder on. So I figure I can do that. OCD is going to freak out. I put all the bolts facing one direction, which is something that I like to do. Uh, however, 
that's not something that uh, happens. So um, it actually hits the bottom here to put it in the correct way, which I guess I put every other bolt the wrong way, but um, that's all right. try to set it you know, as close to the, the bottom and level with the landslide as much as you can um, to give you the best cut as you're turning the dirt over. So um, pretty much all the tools you need, you know, are simple stuff, ratchets, some sockets, you know, 15, 16, three quarter, uh, and a couple wrenches, and pretty much this is what you have, um, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, simple mechanics, you know, nothing terribly exciting as far as um, assembly processes go. Um, I really enjoy how this came out as far as, you know, putting it together. Um, like I said, I do really enjoy that sticker uh, on the new ones and, and some of the improvements that, you know, I've seen and noticed um, is quite interesting just to see the little things. Um, as far as, like I said, the advantage of buying a new one is right here, in my opinion. Uh, everything's nice and tight. I've seen these threads on the adjuster so wore out, feet, you know, things come down and hit that, knocks the threads over. It's just not, it's not worth it, in my opinion, to go buy used when you can go buy new ones shipped to your door. Um, it just depends on how much you value your time. But I think this is a great product, American Made Company, and there's no reason everyone shouldn't have one behind their garden tractor to go out and plow your garden with. Uh, I think that's something that, especially with the way times are going these days, I don't think that it's a bad deal to uh, have a little garden with your own food grown in your own backyard. So, um, one day I hope soon, uh, whenever all this stuff goes away, I can put this behind the tractor and go out and test it and maybe we'll do some videos on that. Um, and I hope that in the future I can have a couple other uh, older Brindley attachments that, you know, restoration projects here in the shop we can do. Um, maybe I'll do some more videos on that. So if there's anything anyone wants to see, you know, feel free to let me know. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Hope of John Deere. Uh, follow me on YouTube, I guess, subscribe or whatever you want to call it. Uh, also, Hope of John Deere. 